Hello, everybody. It's Thursday. It's 7 p.m. It's time for content and cocktails. My name is Tom Stanhope, and this is my weekly deep dive into all things video content creation related. You might be watching this um, on my personal profile. You might be watching this on uh, the uh, on on Twitch, on Twitter, on YouTube, a myriad of different places. But you might also be watching this here uh, in my group, Grow Your Business with Video. And if you're not a member of Grow Your Business with Video, I suggest coming on over and joining because it is a brilliant place to be if you want to learn how, as the name suggests, to grow your business with video. Hello, Vicky. How are you doing? Hello, Pixie. Oh, it's nice to see people coming in. Yes. So um, this evening, I was going to talk a little bit about audio. Um, and I was looking at my notes and thinking, there's not a great deal. <laughs> there's not a great deal to say about audio um, in in a kind of um, in a in a sort of hello Nadine in a sort of um, basic way. So we'll kind of hello Scott. How are you doing? Um, we're gonna we're going to um, take a quick look at um, the the world of uh, of, of sound, and then we we I'm going to chuck it open to a bit of a Q and A. So if that sounds good, that's what we're doing. So um, I missed it last week. Sorry about that. Um, just couldn't quite fit in everything that everything that needed to be done last week. I was delivering a training uh, in uh, in, a, in a in another group, um, uh, the excellent um, Tribe Geeks group, which is all about growing Facebook communities and how to sort of um, better to sort of serve communities. And uh, had a great time. We were talking about repurposing content. And something I might actually run a bit of a challenge around, a bit of a repurposing challenge. So, um, obviously, the content side of content of cocktails is is kind of is 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 this. We're going to be talking about video. The cocktail side of it. I'm going to make some French seventy fives. So this is this is if you are a long time um, viewer of this, this is one of these cocktails that I keep coming back to because it's so delicious. It's probably my favorite of all time. Hello, Mike. Oh, it's good to see you. I feel, feel like I haven't sort of been here for ages. It's weird. I, I feel like I've missed um, missed so much. There we go. So there's the, there's the fizz. It is it is not champagne, just to be clear. It's um, it's it's actually a, a, a kind of a dry carver, which I, I and this is probably slightly controversial. I prefer that to um, to a champagne for a French seventy five. Um, so all it is is a measure of gin, measure of gin that goes in there, little measure, um, half measure of simple syrup, some gum syrup. A little bit of sweetness. Um, you can probably hear my kids kind of mucking about in the background. They are um, adjusting to the fact that they are back in school. Are they happy about it? I don't know. Do I care? Very much not. Hello, Karen. It's Karen Dawkins. And some lemon juice. And I've again cheated with the lemon juice because I've discovered that attempting to cut and squeeze a lemon live on Facebook is... Um, a recipe for disaster and a measure of lemon so uh it's it's kind of um all goes in there bit of ice bit of ice um and then give it a shake for the front so this is the base for the french 75 That's the base for the French 75. I'm not going to savour the bottle this time. I'm, I'm going to just open it the normal way. Um, those those of you who were watching over, over Christmas, um, in the run-up to Christmas, I savoured a bottle of champagne, which was, which was good fun. So then you just, all you do, it's really simple. You just take a little bit of this, put it in the bottom of a, of a champagne flute, um, maybe a kind of a, a couple of, Couple of fingers of of that mixture. Hello, Kerry. I'm hoping I'm hoping that we're going to have um, 
uh, uh, French 75s when we all get to um, all get to split. Um, so into those that couple of fingers of uh, of, of of mixture go um, goes a bit of fizz. It's uh, it is actually one of the more lethal cocktails you can have because it's sort of it's it's a bit like fancy lemonade um and is as a consequence um both extra yummy and extra boozy so um let me just top that up there we go cheers to your good health everybody As my boss says, I always say that the cocktails are really nice, but this one is is is, is just it's just a nice cocktail, straight up. No, no messing. It's a goodie. Um, cheers. So we can get onto the content part of this now. Um, what am I going to talk about? What is there to say about sound? So there's a famous quote from George Lucas famous director and friends to zip up teddy bears everywhere. Um, sound is half of the picture. It's one of those statements you think, eh, what? Um, and, uh, but with, with video and film, it's absolutely true. Sound makes all the difference. Good quality sound in your video content will help massively. Now, before I came in here, I did the first part of a training series in my membership, all about getting good quality sound and what kit to get and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in a bit of a deeper dive into this, then you'd be very welcome to come and join me in our membership, um, which is which is sort of um, becoming something uh, of a library of, of, of stuff at the moment, but um, it's kind of uh, developing and growing and sort of spreading so we're looking at kit this month. We're sort of doing doing a deep dive into what kit to buy, what kit you should uh, kind of uh, be setting up with, how you should set it up, how best to use it to get the best results, all that kind of stuff. But tonight here in Grow Your Business with Video, I want to talk a little bit about audio. So as I said, sound is half the picture. If you are paying attention to your sound, you are delivering up a better quality experience for your audience. If the name of the game is to communicate clearly, effectively and precisely to your ideal customer, then making sure that the quality of your audio, that's a really, really important thing to do because it delivers up a better, um, better kind of, um, better quality of experience <laughs> thank you mike <laughs> so much content posting the group is fantastic lacking in cocktails well mike i felt maybe probably um if i added cocktails with every live i did nothing would get done and i would have probably by any stretch a serious problem with booze as it happens i've only got uh i've got a i've got a, a an occasional familiar relationship with it so and lockdown hasn't helped Ah, now Pixie says something very interesting. Checking the quality of my audio requires listening to myself. No thanks. Long. I think that that is a really interesting point because so many of us really dislike listening to ourselves on camera. And that is something that I would really encourage you to get your heads around and get comfortable with. And the way you get comfortable with that is really, really straightforward. It is, um, it is, uh, it is something that a little bit of practice will make all the difference about. Force yourself to listen to yourself on video a couple of times a day, even if it's only for, for, for a minute. If you do that regularly, very soon, you won't care. Because, you know, all you're doing, all you're doing is, um, uh, um, really kind of um, hearing yourself as other people hear you because the way 
you know, our heads and our bodies act as resonators and resonant sort of cavities. We, we, we don't hear ourselves as anybody else does. Only we hear ourselves like this. So um, uh, um, the, uh, the, the sort of the, the, the act of making yourself feel more familiar with how you sound is, is quite a simple one. Um, Karen, you might be in luck because I still haven't pulled my finger out and, and finished um, upgrading the new landing page. So actually the old landing page is still active. So if you were to go in and join at the old price, you would still be able to get in. Um, but that will literally be only for a few days. So um, if you want it, it's there. Um, uh, and to sort of hunt out a link, I can send you on. But yeah, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I've been spectacularly lazy, um, as you'll maybe uh, have noticed. <laughs> uh, Mike says, there's a whole title for a new podcast, you Tom, Lockdown Made Being Lush. No, Mike. I was always a bit of a lush so you know sorry lockdown maybe maybe made the uh um uh you know lockdown maybe brought out the best in me i don't know but sound yeah so sound is one of those interesting things we are um we we kind of um we have a duty to our audience to make sure that we're communicating in the best possible way it's 25 quid a month bargain um so it's it's kind of um it's really a very um experiential part of the video process think about how the right music can change the mood of a video totally think to i mean they don't that you know charity videos they used to do this way more sort of aggressively than they do now but the right music track with the right footage, those elements on their own, you know, they're going to tug in your heartstrings. But the right music is a piece of masterful manipulation, if you want to be brutal about it. It is content designed to push buttons. And the use of sound is so important because it completely transforms the... Um, the uh, the experience of, of 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 how people kind of interact with the video content, and the same goes for us. If you're using uh, a decent microphone, you get those 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 kind of parts of your voice that um, that you, you don't necessarily hear. Uh, um, I remember having an interesting conversation with them um, with with a with a friend, uh, Michelle Mills Porter, who who is a, a very experienced speaker, and we were talking about um, she has a uh, a book which is brilliant. It's called Phone Genius. It's all about how selling on the phone um, is is kind of is is something that we should all be doing more of. But actually, what she talks about um, the the way that analog audio processing is different to digital processing, and that sort of is true for for, for this kind of situation because of the way that audio gets processed digitally you get a lot of information cut out so sound information the way you're hearing me now whilst that the audio quality is decent you're missing a lot of the, the sort of the depth and the richness of of my voice and that's just true of of, of everybody on on your kind of you know, on whatever microphone you're using if it's a digital micro um, processing between if it's a digital processing kind of process between me speaking and you hearing then information is lost um it's why you know sort of high-end recording studios will will kind of will produce a better result you want to be increasing the amount of information that gets from your mouth to people's ears because it it's such an important part of who you are as we're communicating with lives, you want to be using everything you can, and a decent microphone will help with that. So I would say, invest in a decent microphone. You don't need to spend thousands on this. Even just a little tie clip will make all the difference. Or um, uh, a microphone that's sort of a mounted microphone, you know, one that's sort of overhead or kind of underneath or, or whatever. Um, something to allow the, um, the, the variations of your voice to kind of come through um, 
loud and clear. So what Karen has said, listen to a few lives in the group last night. The first one was recorded in Zoom and streamed live into a Facebook group, sounded great quality. Second one, just using Facebook Live, sounded crap, same group. Yeah, so that, that's basically what I'm saying. It all is down to how the audio gets processed. So some platforms will, um, will have a will have one way of processing audio and other platforms will have another way and um i think what happens particularly with with kind of facebook i imagine is that um it will assess how fast your connection is and it will strip out more information in order to get across so if you're if you're hearing somebody and they're sounding really tinny it's because you're losing certain um kind of elements of the sound mix in order to make the the sort of um the size of information packages smaller um if that makes sense so you know you're 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 kind of um you're really looking to um just reduce or increase the information rather without these systems kind of chopping too much out um, you know, it's why a, a corded phone will always give slightly better sound quality than a than a, than a wireless phone, um, it, it, because you you're you're kind of you're not using lots of different methods to carry the signal. But that's that's different to what we're doing here um, in, in many ways. But um, yeah, invest in a microphone, and I think you'll you'll find that there's a whole world of quality. That opens up. Um, the I'm trying to think of other things to think about sound. So there isn't really much more to say about it than that. Frankly, you've got a choice. Do you want to spend 15, 20 quid on a cheap, on a cheapish microphone that's going to change the quality of your audio and your pre-recorded video or your or your your, your lives? Or do you want to keep using the, the sort of the 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 standard mics? Did I, I did? You see, analog. I'm a big analog fan. I like a bit of analog. Think of it's a warmer sound. It's so here, here's something you know. Audio high if hi-fi nerds. I remember so a job we did years ago for a, a really super high-end hi-fi place. I remember going in and you know they had a hi-fi kit there that was you could literally spend half a million quid i'm not kidding on on amps and speakers and all sorts of stuff um and they had all of this kit set up but with a with a turntable and an analog uh analog sort of um amp and all that kind of stuff and it sounded absolutely amazing rich it kind of with that sort of um it was so it was vinyl it's turntable and, and really just the whole experience was was amazing and i was still sat there thinking if i was absolutely mind-bendingly rich maybe i would because you initially think what's the difference yeah surely this can't be this can't be that great but when i listened to it it was the most amazing thing but the analog sound experience is is something completely different to digital because you have a whole bunch of bunch more in, information and and i and i really like i really like that it's not particularly relevant for what we're talking about because there isn't particularly a way around it um um so it, it's not not particularly important but i am um, i think it's worth talking about because i quite i quite like it i like the sound i like the thing the experience it gives I wonder if we're going to get anyone from Twitch again, like we did the other week. <laughs> it was so weird. The kind of guy, it felt like somebody just came and sort of walked up and found a door. Is like, and what's? I wonder what's behind here. Oh, it's a, it's a bald bloke drinking champagne, talking. What's he talking about? I don't know. So Twitch guy, if you're out there, come back. He was okay. He was great. He seemed like a, you know. Like you, Scott, that average of 0. 0.6, or was it 0. 0.66 viewers, three, oh, you see, 
three twitches last week look at that i don't think i don't think we're gonna you know are we gonna get anyone from twitch i don't know it seems unlikely so um who here has got a, a sort of a, a dedicated mic setup for their lives and their their kind of um their pre-record stuff what uh and if you have what are you using what kit are you using I'm going to use this as an opportunity to have a have a, an olive. Whilst you tell me all. Blue snowball, yeah, the, yeah, that's good. That's a good one, isn't it? The thing is, <laughs> he didn't join the group. <laughs> Oh no, I think he did join the group. Good choice. Good choice, Nadine. I like a tie tip. It's versatile, it's simple. You can pretty much guarantee to get good some good quality sound wherever. Yeah, so Twitch is where the proper nerds hang out so it's a it's a get it's a gaming primarily it's a gaming streaming platform but actually it's got an ever-growing um sort of uh, base of of people streaming all sorts of stuff on there um and uh, i wanted to i wanted to have a presence there i have a mic set up that i bought for vocals it's a brand that none of my music mates have heard of. So, have any of you got um, uh, any wireless mics? The, um, for example, the the Rode Wireless Go. Has anyone got that? Not fancy. Yeah. So a, a tie clip will go into you. Yeah, that's it. It's versatile. It's great. Sweet FA. Sweet FA. My ring light broke last week. So I'm back to zero tech. Oh dear. Hmm. My husband has a music studio, so he's in. <laughs> well, fair enough. That's okay. Funny, I was down here in Devon a couple of couple of months ago. The most amazing house came up on the market. It's it was an old recording studio, and you could only get to it. It was up a it was up a river creek, and you could only get to it by boat. And it had the most astonishingly well-appointed audio recording sound recording studios as you'd expect um uh um and and i, I looked at it with kind of uh envious eyes and it was like you know a million quid or something like that but what have we got here nicola says i bought a blue yeti last month getting ready for podcasting but not tried it out yet Hopefully next week. Also got a title. Good, good choices. The Blue Yeti seems to be a really popular choice, and it seems to be a consistently, I mean, it's one I recommend because it's a consistently good microphone. He did. Yeah, I've, I've, I've just checked he did join. I've got a memory like a sieve, Karen. Um, Mike says, I've heard Blue Snowball, Mike, for desktop. Yes, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. It was astonishing. So I, f I found that really amazing, actually, that um, going live, as I said, pre-purposing, pre going live to, because I'm live one, two, three, four, four, seven different platforms at the moment, including Periscope. So you might, you could, if you want, go and watch me on Twitter. I can't imagine anybody is watching on Twitter. I've got a much neglected Twitter account. I keep on meaning to try and sort of do the juggling with was it yellow duck yellow duck use yellow duck to go live on insta uh, sub-zero widely doesn't work yeah it's funny i i've got um i've got a, a, a usb mic it seems to affect usb mics particularly with windows 10 appear to have a real problem um i don't know what it is but if you can find um yeah, um, uh, I imagine so, Scott. That sounds like a terrible thing to have. <laughs> you should get a cream for that. Uh, 
I'm sorry, that wasn't very funny, was it? <laughs> I'm pretty very pure up today. Nadima there wants to build a studio and move. Uh, well, that's it. I think that's the, that's the kind of because we're sort of looking to move house again. Um, but we're looking to move out to Dartmoor. Um, um, and uh, and one of the things we're looking for is is kind of um is a is a sort of a basically a super sh studio shed. Um, By the way, I had no idea in GSD this week until I'd already missed it. I, I am, I am, Karen, I'm afraid I am everywhere right now, and it's only going to get worse. We're just about to, um, within probably within the next month or so, press the button on our on a, on a full blown um, YouTube driven omnipresence paid marketing campaign. So this will be kind of remarketing driven by YouTube advertising. So you will probably you are probably going to see a whole heap more of me um i'm sorry in advance um i will, my face ideally will be popping up on ac across all sorts of uh um uh, um uh, remarketing platforms all he, scott says all you have to remember with the blue is to uninstall them every now and then and reinstall they degrade gradually yeah that's funny isn't it it's these these things kind of um, I wonder if it's a function of is with of Windows 10 because if it's a USB mic, they really don't like it. But if you can get one that plugs into the the actual mic it, mic input jack, it seems to be it seems to be better. Karen says, "I want to get a webcam, so I've seen the difference it makes to the visual. Completely changes the lighting, doesn't it? Yeah, no need for yeah. Um, so so currently, I am not using a a light at all, and I'm going to move between cameras. Hang on, so." I've got a, a cheap webcam and I'm just going to show you the difference. So let's change between the camera. Ugh, look at that. What's going on there? That's horrible. Uh, let's see if I can change the audio. So the audio is. Um, uh, there we go. How about that? Very, very odd. Very, very different. So you can see the kit you use makes a huge amount of difference. Does the sound sound different? How different does it sound from your perspective? I'd love to. I'd love to hear. Let's go back to that. Look at that. Way better. Let's put the mic. <clears throat> there we go. So Karen also says, I fancy getting into YouTube, although I know nadder about it right now. Well, Karen, my training in GSD was all about YouTube. And that was really, really kind of uh, um, an hour a bit of me on, you know, going full tilt at YouTube. So if you've not done it, not done it before, get into it. Um, so actually, I've had some interesting experiences this week. I've, I've been playing around with um, with reels on on Instagram, and I've not read. Inst Instagram um, is really uh, one of those platforms that I've I've kind of completely neglected. And today we had to, so in in the mastermind we had a a really great training from Sam Barefoot. Um, I'm gonna have another one of these, Mike. It's number two, if you're keeping count. Bit of the old mixture. And I've had some, re so I did a little test yesterday on reels. I put up a bit of, uh, just a random bit of footage um, of, of, of kind of a Plymouth on my, ch on my Instagram channel. And I wanted to see how many views it got over a 24 hour period. Um, as it stands now, we got hang on let's see what it what it was at the reels for those of you who don't know reels is a short form it's the short form kind of um answer to the likes of 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 tiktok um and it actually i think it presents a great you know video opportunity 30 second videos um and 
reels. So now, 24 hours, 2,857 views of that video um, in a 24 hour period. And I put another couple up and they're already sort of into, into 60, 50 and 60. And that was, that was only like an hour ago. So it's really interesting. I think there's an awful lot of, of, of the, as, a, as a platform has been pushed, an aspect of, of the Instagram platform. So yeah, reels might be a place to look at. But also if you're into short form content, then shorts on YouTube are a good thing to look at. I think there's Fleet. Is it Fleet on Twitter? How many followers do I have? Oh, not many. Um, 1,118, which is interesting. So in, for me, Instagram has been seriously neglected, seriously neglected. And uh, I, I've started sort of turning attention to that as well, sort of using a repurposing. So I'm, I'm not making content for each platform individually. I'm trying to repurpose the content I have, which is what I spoke in, in Karen will know what I'm talking about here. So I did a whole piece on repurposing last week, you know, in another membership. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's, um, I suspect that it's just because, um, as a as a new platform, as a new as a relatively new uh, side to the platform, it's it's kind of being it's being algorithmically pushed. So I, I suspect what will happen is over the months the the kind of the those those numbers will not sustain. It's like um, it's like kind of um, the. Uh, uh, the way things were with video on LinkedIn, you know, you could when when they were first putting LinkedIn video as a thing, when you put video content up on LinkedIn natively, it all of a sudden, you know, you're getting that you were fairly effortlessly getting high hunt, you know, into the thousands of views pretty pretty easily. Um, but also, you got to remember that these platforms, the way they count views, I think on Instagram, I think it's three seconds counts a view, so. And it was just a random piece of footage I put up there. So more importantly, I'm seeing, I've actually put some proper content up there and I'm gonna see what it does. Yeah, so as it stands, 1,118 people. So really not very many in the great scheme of things. Um, yeah, so so I think kind of, um, but you know, again, the, the sound thing is, the sound thing is is important whether you're doing short form content for for reels or or lives or pre recorded content for YouTube or pre recorded content for your training, you know, your 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 membership, whatever it is, whatever it is, attention to detail around sound will make the experience much better, and this this is the way I like to think of it. Good sound should be completely unnoticeable. Bad sound will drag people all of us, you know, harshly out of what they're watching because it, it's 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 real it's a real disconnect. It can be a really unpleasant experience. And some of the so it's my number one. Do you remember cinemas? Big screen, lots of seats. You could go in them with other people and sit in a room and and, and be near people quite you know not not two meters away. you could be remember them cinemas yeah the cinema experience that i love the most is when the sound system is is really really meaty i love i love a good audio experience as much as i love a good video experience and a bad quality sound system in a cinema really <laughs> really annoys my wife actually she's like you're such a nerd it's like well yes but you knew that i was never shy about that so um you know a good good quality sound is your friend in terms of holding on to viewers bad quality sound will um will just turn people off and actually it doesn't take long before you know you know if you if you're consistently producing 
things with bad sound, you you know, you'll just lose any any audience you've you've had. Forget it. So, have we got any questions around sound? Any um any sort of any thoughts? I have another olive. Mm. <coughs> oh God, I'm not going to choke live on on. <coughs> oh God. <coughs> I'm okay. Yeah, so um funnily enough actually, I think Karen, you mentioning um <laughs> it's true, Mike. Um this I may be choking, but the sound is crystal clear. And really, at the end of the day, isn't that what it's all about? He may have died, but he died the way he lived, with good quality sound at the heart of everything he did. That would go views. Well, I know, but it would be, it would be, um, you know, I'd, I'd really, I'd really not like to go. Rough cut. So, okay. I mean, so. A tight, a tight clip, Mike, a lav mic. Um, well, I had, a, I had the thing out a second ago. It's gone. I put it down somewhere. Um, 25 quid actually, for something that'll plug into your computer or into your phone, around that kind of thing. A decent lav mic, a decent lav mic can cost you hundreds of pounds, but a, a one that will raise the quality of your of your audio from eh, pretty crap to kind of very, very acceptable, you know, sub 50 quid. Um, if you really want to get sort of... Um, to up your game then you know if you put a budget of around sort of 100 quid because i think what the, the sort of blue yeti stuff that's kind of up you know I, they seem to be on offer relatively regularly and i've seen you know i've seen them on on sort of on amazon for sort of 80 90 quid um they're not the uh they're not the mega investments they used to be um i mean we but the one thing you can, i will say about microphones is they are bits of kit that don't become obsolete. You're never going to have to particularly um, suit, you know, regularly. And once you've got your microphone, that's it. I mean, our our location microphone. So we, we have a a um, a really great microphone called a Sennheiser Four One Six. I think we paid. This is this is our pro. This is for the sort of pro stuff we do when we're out on location with clients. The Sennheiser 416 is a is a rifle um, a rifle mic sort of as a very directional microphone, really great for outdoor recording. That was I think eight hundred quid, um, but that's a prof that's a professional um, uh, kind of recording uh, sort, of, you know, sort of ENG recording microphone. Brilliant microphone. It's a workhorse. The design of that microphone has almost not changed for about 30 years i think it, it's 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 a real workhorse you know any any sound recordist will will probably have a, a sennheiser 416 in their in their kind of tool bag because it's just such a reliable robust microphone and they don't go out of they don't go out of date it's not like cameras cameras you're always chasing you're always chasing the kind of um the next the next big thing i mean i i'm, I'm looking i'm specking up a new camera at the moment so i'm looking at move because i've got some i've got some really exciting projects in the in the in the pipeline and i want to sort of upgrade my kit and i'm looking at a 6k camera as in resolution not cost um it's a, a black magic black magic camera black magic are, are, are great but i know that even when i buy that i will probably have a couple of years before it becomes old hat it's crazy but microphones they never go they never go out of date Lights, lenses, microphones. They're great. Camera bodies. Ugh. You're always chasing with those. Yeah. 
don't die live on Facebook. That would be bad, wouldn't it? But yeah, it's it's reasonable. You know, you're not you're not looking at some, you're not looking at a mega investment. And the, the the fact of the matter is, the more you pay, the better you're going to get. But you don't need to spend much to go from crap to decent. It's that jump up from decent to kind of um, uh, kind of uh, really good. That's where the, that's where the big price shift comes. Yeah, so you can. So, Karen, um, there's a really good. So, wireless microphones are a slightly different kettle of fish. I would strongly recommend not not being cheap with these. But the um, the the Rode Wireless Go. I'm going to put the link here. Actually, uh, so I've just put a link in there. The Rode Wireless Go is a very good um option for um for um for a wireless mic setup and at the moment it's been reduced from 185 quid to 140 so it's actually a very good it's a very good option to have a uh, very good sort of offer at the moment a really excellent wireless mic system particularly if you are somebody who is um you know you're doing uh, something where you've, you've got to move, you're doing sort of exercise or, or that or that kind of video. That, that's a, that's a really a really sound option. Um, I would. You, you, so another thing to consider: if you are buying any of this kit, make sure you've got the right adapter. If you're an iPhone user. Um, uh, if you're an iPhone user, get a um, uh, get get make sure you got the adapter for the for the microphone, because um, obviously iPhones have their own sort of proprietary mic port, which is the same as the charger port, and you know Samsung have now adapt uh, adopted that approach as well with the US USB C. Um, is it USB C? I can never remember what it's called. I think it's called a USB C um, port. So yeah, you'll you'll need the right adapters. Scott says that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, the the long lav. So I I've got a long lav as well, which I quite like. But you're right, sometimes it is a pain if you're moving around. You you don't want to get kind of caught up in your in your in your cabling at all. Any other questions? I've enjoyed this. It's great. I've, I've, I've missed whenever I miss it. If I ever miss a week, I, I think I've missed two or three over the over the over the months. Um, I always feel like my week has lost a serious uh, marker. It's weird. It's now come to a point where um, th these these kind of it's become such a habit. And I'm somebody who struggles to form habits. So um, I, I, I relatively recently finally got a diagnosis of, a, of, of ADD, um, which was fascinating because I think for years I've, I'd always felt that kind of um, that there was something going on, but I wasn't quite able to put my finger on it. And getting that diagnosis, everything kind of slotted into place, actually prompted by two conversations, one with, with, with Una, my wife, and two with um, a, a guy called uh, Bill Morrow, who was um, uh, one of Richard Branson's very early sort of um, partners at, um, at Virgin in the early days and we were talking I, I was talking to this guy and he was he was um, he was outlining because he, he now this guy Bill Morrow now runs a, a an angel investment um, firm and he was talking about how they 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 specifically look for companies that are that are sort of that have um, somebody with a, a kind of a, a neurodiverse profile in the leadership team they like a male female leadership team and they like one of those two people to be uh to be kind of some kind of you know dyslexic add or, or beyond the uh, the autistic spectrum or, or, or kind of whatever because they say it brings a completely different perspective and if you have that person balanced out by somebody who is like completely systems uh focused then that's like a perfect um, and off, off the back of that conversation, I came away thinking that is really interesting because all the things you've said, I think I'm that. 
<laughs> and so I sort of went away and had a had a long think and, and sort of did some more research and kind of started actually asking medical people medical questions. And uh, and 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 so for me, one of the things I always find very difficult is forming habits. And 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 this <clears throat> this has become a habit, a really important habit. And it's it's in this consistency that you know that 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 the sort of magic happens with business being going live regularly um has transformed my business um but historically i know that forming habits is complicated for me um so i'm constantly astonished that i'm still doing this almost you know getting on for sort of 20 months into this now um it's great and I, I i feel like if if i can do it if i with all of my kind of fighting against kind of habit formation if i can do it anyone can so yeah content creation is is kind of a is is a is a complicated um, thing so make it simple but 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 in terms of the quality of the content um give yourself a uh, give yourself a leg up by getting yourself a decent decent microphone good i'm glad you found that helpful nadine it's it's um it's one of those topics that is you know i'll be honest it's quite boring microphones it's like you know the very very short answer to the question i posed at the start of this live is how do you get good quality audio get a good microphone that's it I, you know i could have i could have saved for you know 50 minutes of waffle but I wouldn't have had a cocktail, so it wouldn't be much fun. And that's interesting. Yeah, so the, the really interesting thing is, there's a lot of people, self-employed people, who when I have discussions with them, if you are in the sort of creative space, if you are self-employed, it's there. And it's something I'm going to be talking more about, because actually I'm realising there are more people out there who have this in their lives. And... Um, see it as a, as a as a real problem but actually it, it, with the right sort of structure and technique to, to sort of focus all of the amazing things about it because it is in some ways it's both it's both your own personal superpower but it's also got all the kryptonite it needs built in so you've got to find a way to sort of structure things so that you're, you're, you're using all the things that are great about this this kind of the, the, the way that our ADD brains are made up to be to, if you can leverage all the benefits whilst at the same time doing things to minimize all of the all of the crap that comes with it it can be it can be incredibly powerful my, my life has changed in the last um, the last kind of two years actually since I since I worked out what was going on and I was a, and was able to sort of put things in place and work in a way that was kind of suited to me, to my personality type, to the way I actually worked. Then that was that was that was the thing. That was the moment when everything changed. Actually, thank you, Scott. That means a lot. Actually, it means it really does. Good. I'm glad you found that useful. Well, we'll sort of we'll start to bring this to a close. Basically, all I'm saying is, if you haven't got a microphone. Go and get one. It's not much. It's going to make it's. It's not a big investment, but it's going to make a huge amount of difference. So you know, easy peasy. It solves a very. It, it it's a big problem with a lot of people's videos that can be fixed just like that. I can do snap. Oh dear, it's not going to work. It can be solved. You know, it can be solved in a snap. And that is, um. Oh, now this is interesting, isn't it? I've now done 200 hours of live, Tom. It's been a hard song, but it's now making a huge 10 days, 10 leads. That is fascinating. And I'll tell you why, Scott, because this is, this is content marketing 101, isn't it? What we're doing here, what's happening now is pure and simple content marketing. Content marketing takes time. And this comment 
absolutely illustrates it. You have a very long lead in and there is a point when it all clicks and it is going to feel like you are shouting into an empty room for a huge swathe of time. But then point there comes a tip on know that you're there and they see the quality of what you're doing and they see the um repeatability in what you're doing and it it makes you into an industry leader we've spoken about this at length before scott but you are one of i think one of the only speakers who really charged hell for leather into live video and it is going to put you streets ahead of everybody else when we come out of the other end of this you know you you have you have used this time to 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 to, to, to feel lucky to be on scott's completely separate in some ways to what we do i mean i've been able to indulge my my other but it, it's a it's an opportunity where to, to showcase expertise knowledge all that kind of stuff and it does oh 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 we've got a bit of a there we go I'm so productive when I have structure and deadlines, but so overwhelmed when I don't. That is absolutely 100%. I, I work really well when I'm, when I, I used to work really well when I'm bang up against a deadline. And I think it's to do with, with, with kind of executive function in the brain. That the, the sort of the way we, the way that I kind of give value to things when they are um uh kind of the, the ur urgency is urgency is kind of is critical um so i think we're about to get i've got an unstable i'm getting an unstable connection warning so i might i might bring this to a close before we before we kind of um uh start to lose things entirely but yeah, so we're kind of getting slightly off topic here, <laughs> but it's an interesting off topic. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll come at this. Maybe this this is the topic for next week. Yeah, I think we'll take a slightly deeper dive into this. Um, so, really, as I said, go and buy a microphone. I've gone wobbly well look guys thank you so much for being here i will um i will see you next week and um really content of cocktails that's what it's about if, you, if you're not a member of the group come and join me i'd love to have you in the group so my name is tom stanhope this has been content of cocktails i will see you